welcome to the Dana Duckworth Show brought to you by Alabama One. I'm Kennedy Chase here with head coach Dana Duckworth and coach how are you and Team 48 feeling after that amazing home opening win against Kentucky? We're feeling progress. We are seeing that the hard work is paying off. The attention to detail is there. Uh, it's such an exciting team to watch. I think that as a staff, we really appreciate the fact that with each week, we really are making some improvements in all areas. And of course, we want the ladies to continue to stay hungry and passionate about getting better every week. That's awesome. And I was actually there and present at the meet, so I could definitely see that progress and that amazing finish that you all had. But we're going to go into Volt. Um, so going into this Volt rotation, what were some improvements that you noticed from your team? Our goal was to do big dynamic vaults and, of course, the landing. And that is where we made some steps forward but definitely aren't at our absolute best yet. It was exciting to see some new faces and do some more difficult vaults, so that was a step in the right direction. Well, let's get, take a deeper look into the vault rotation. We're going to start with Jordan Paradise, who scored a 9.875. So Jordan competed a one and a half vault. That is a 10-0 start value. She just added this to her repertoire. And so watch this vault. She gets, she just attacks this, gets off the table, and just has that small little hop on the landing. You can see the girls rushing to her. Yes. And it was just such an excitement and a highlight because one, she's a freshman, two, it's a new vault, and she did a great job. Now we're going to move on to Shallon Olsen, who scored a 9.85. Shallon did a much cleaner vault. She does a double twist there. So really, that vault was well executed. The biggest piece for her is this pop on the landing. You see there, she jumps pretty significantly back. But what we were pleased with is the form in the air was better than what she's been. And I just know in my heart she's going to nail that thing. <laughs> Yes, and then we're going to move on to Makari Doggett, who scored a 9-9-2-5. The highlight of vault right here just pops right off the table. Yes. She nails that landing. You can see her excitement. She was so pumped up. And what's really interesting is during warm-ups, she did a vault that was less than positive. And I thought, oh my goodness, should we go back? And should we not do the, the one and a half? Should we just go with the full? But she did. She said, Dana, I trust myself. I know I can do it. I said, well, if you can do it and you trust yourself, then I trust you. And that's what she did. She went out there and did an awesome vault. And you can just see from her excitement, she was pleased with how she handled that moment. Yes, I was there and the crowd went crazy when she landed that vault. It was just such an amazing experience to see that and actually see her excitement in her face. But don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll be discussing bars and beam. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One. Welcome back to the Dana Duckworth Show brought to you by Alabama One. I'm Kennedy Chase here with head coach Dana Duckworth and coach. Let's talk about Bars a little bit. How did you feel about Team 48's performance during this rotation? Bars was a success. Our focus was let's stay consistent and continue to increase our stick percentages and our handstands. And I think really when I look back, that's exactly what was accomplished. And was one of our best bar scores, you know, in a long while. And I just feel this team is on fire for the details. And as long as we continue to do those things in practice, it should translate into competition. That's awesome. You said you've been seeing progress, so let's look a little bit at that progress, starting with Cam Machado, who scored a 9.925 on bars. Cameron just has such a clean line on this event. You see when she's in a handstand, it's pretty undeniable. She was tighter in her legs compared to last week. She goes from the high bar to the low bar, and then she transitions right here with a Maloney half. She literally flies off from one bar to the next, but you see those legs are better pinned together. She does a very challenging combination, a full pirouette here to a double tuck dismount. You see her nail that landing. And again, I just can't speak to enough of her consistency in competition. She is such a fun athlete to coach. I would say that she's very uh, meticulous, but also kind of quiet. So I love how her competition and performance allows her to explode, you know, really explode. And now we're going to move on to Louisa Blanca, who scored a 9.925 as well on bars. And Louisa has a gorgeous bar routine. You can just see the attention to the toe point and the handstand. She works bars very confidently. The swing and the fluidity of the routine is what just stands out for me. And of course, this big full in dismount, and she nails that landing and it celebrates that. And then her team comes and just grabs her. <laughs> and it was just a great night of bars. Yes, and I noticed since I was there, every time your 
athletes would perform and do well, you would shoot your arms up because you were so excited. And I was like, oh, that's just such an amazing coach-athlete relationship. It's an amazing feeling too. It's authentic, right? Mm -hmm. Like you sit here and you watch Makari and she does this huge Tkachev to a minute pack. We make it look easy, but yes. that is really hard to do. She does a pirouette on the low bar, moves up to the high bar, and again, we're trying to hit those handstands, and she sets up for this double layout dismount, one of the best in the country, in my opinion. Yes. And see, when she sells, we sell. <laughs> and so it was just awesome uh, just and fun to watch that they continued to build momentum. So from one routine to the next, they only got better. And yes. again, that's one of the goals. So, you know, you want to start out strong. You want to have a very consistent leadoff position. So it sets up the next five routines to be able to be successful. And then your hope is that with each routine, your score will get better. Your performance will be more consistent. And then the outcomes take care of themselves. And I love that just sportsmanship that you all have together. I think when someone does well, everyone celebrates, not just that one particular athlete. So I think that's just an amazing thing to just watch and really inspires everyone to have good sportsmanship. Kennedy, I call that chemistry. Oh, yes. And really, it's not something that the coaches build. It's something that the, each team does. And this team has as much fun outside the gym as they do inside the gym, which then translates into a lot of joy in what we do every day. Well, let's take a look at Beam. I mean, that was an amazing rotation as well. We're going to start with Lexi Graber, who scored a 9-9. So this was the first time Lexi was back into the beam lineup. Wow. And so she did a really hard series right there. That's a very challenging leap pass. All of her skills are very high level. Yes. She lays, basically ends the routine with what's called a nastia. I didn't love that skill as much, but I loved her landing. And yes. so we always talk about it. If you're a little off, uh, really find a way to cover. And right here you see her kind of take the little wobble and then she covers with the squeeze of the hand, point of the toe goes right into the dismount and really sells that routine to the finish. So I was really proud of her getting back out there. And the team, not the team, well, the team as well, but the audience went so loud for Lexi. Well, they knew awesome. that we had had a mistake in the very beginning of the lineup, so they knew how important every routine was after. And then you have freshman Lily Hudson get yes. up there, and she nails it. She just does a beautiful combination. She does a switch switch, which is a leap pass that you have to have in your routine. She does a side aerial, and she lands with this round off one and a half and really her feet don't move. And just the way she maintained her composure when the pressure was on speaks volumes for the kind of confidence she has in her performance and, her, and in herself. Yes, and she scored a 9.925 and was SEC Freshman of the Week. It was a good week for yes, Lily. It is awesome right to week see for her. Lily. She got to compete all around, and that's exciting for a freshman to get out there. We have high hopes for, for Lily. And then we're gonna finish it off with Louisa Blanca, who also scored a 9.925. You almost can't speak when Luisa Blanco works beam. Yes. The, the work really is what speaks for itself. She has beautiful elements. She does very hard skills. She keeps it moving. She does a beautiful switch leap beat jump right here and has a round off double full dismount. You see her right there. She did that, that little slide of the feet and we're gonna get that dismount. And if anyone is capable of scoring a 10.0 on that balance beam, it's going to be Luisa Blanco. But I'm really fired up about the entire beam lineup. I think that when you watch their confidence and their movement and their presentation, the fact that they take their eyes off the beam and they smile at the judges, it speaks to a very confident, aggressive, well-trained team. And I hope they continue that progress week after week. Well, speaking about progress and aggression and confidence, we're gonna look at floor when we come back, so don't go anywhere. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One. Welcome back to the Dana Duckworth Show, brought to you by Alabama One. I'm Kennedy Chase here with head coach Dana Duckworth. And coach, we're going to that final rotation floor. How did you think the team feel performing their floor routines in Coleman Coliseum? First of all, they had waited a while to be able to be in, home, in Coleman Coliseum for a home meet. And there's nothing like competing in front of your home crowd and having the energy and the passion of our, of our fans behind us. And so that was something that they looked forward to and they did an excellent job. The ladies really do feed off the energy and we had an awesome floor rotation. Yes, we did. So we're gonna take a look, a deeper look into those floor rotations starting with Cam Machado who scored a 9-9-2-5. 
Cameron does a double pike, a one and a half pike front right here. She also has some dance moves that are just second to none in college gymnastics. And she has a big ending with a double tuck right here. If we do show it, yes, triple watch. She has one, two, three, and let me just make sure I get it done so I add another half. It was just beautifully done. That's a really hard skill. And then she ends with a beautiful double tuck. So you see that there wasn't a lot to take. I think the most exciting piece for me is that she was actually seventh in the lineup originally, and she stepped in for Luisa Blanco when Luisa had to come out and did an excellent job with confidence. Wow, now we're gonna move on to Maddie Walagora who scored a 9925. And Maddie does a really difficult front double full twist. It's a E pass. She does a leap pass, a tergite half to, or actually full to a wolf full. And I just think that she has a sassy floor routine. She did a good job in selling that routine and then ends with a beautiful pass with a front layout here to the finish again. The girls did not give the judges a lot to take, and that's a good thing. Remember, Florentine started a 10, and it's your 10 to lose. And right here, we have Lily Hudson step in, and she does a front layout to immediate front double twist, sticks that wow. landing, and she couldn't even move, it was so good. And then she sets up for another hard pass, a, a two and a half twist, so you see her twist two and a half times, completely control that landing. And then she ends with a gorgeous round off back handspring double tuck and she sells that finish. You see her just get to, uh, it was just so good. So good. And she also scored a 995. That's right. That's right. And we just kept building. And then of course, our final competitor was Lexi Grayward that does a tuck full in. She has a couple leaps in there that's part of her requirements. And she ends with this beautiful front through to a double pike salto, just again sells the landing, has confidence in her movement, and gets the crowd on their feet, and does a routine that just makes the crowd want to watch it and get yes. mesmerized by her energy and her, com and her competitiveness. I feel like whenever I watch Lexi, she just, just exudes all this confidence. Do you think that's because of you know her age, or how do you think, what do you think? I think in the sense, Lexi has a, just a demeanor in her. She's a gamer. She loves to compete. She loves the pressure, actually craves it. I think a big reason she came back to have her fifth year, we call her a super senior, was one, I think she knew she could help this team be successful and she had an opportunity to get one more try at it and she took advantage of it. And she's being a huge leader in and outside the gym. And I think that really goes to her maturity and her growth. And it's been so much fun having her part of the program. Well, that was an amazing meet. I mean, winning against Kentucky, that's obviously a huge accomplishment for Alabama gymnastics. But don't go anywhere when we come back. I'm excited about this tip. It's overcoming adversity. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One. Welcome back to the Dana Duckworth Show, brought to you by Alabama One. I'm Kennedy Chase here with head coach Dana Duckworth. And now we're going to talk about Dana's tip of the week, which is overcoming adversity. And I'm really excited to hear your thoughts about this. So how important is it to you and to Team 48 when it comes to overcoming adversity? To me, adversity is why we coach. It's everything. You know, in life, we know we're going to face adversity, and that's really where the true resilience is built. And so when we have an obstacle, you have a choice on whether you're going to use it for growth or at the end of the day, you're going to have a pity party. And to me, it's about knowing and expecting the expected that sometimes there's going to be a mistake, and how do we help them mentally be even more confident in how to overcome it? I think that's one of the best parts of coaching. I love how you said that this is something that we have to face in life is adver adversities. You never know what you're going to expect. And I love how you're teaching that to your gymnast. Well, I think at the same time, you are going to potentially have an athlete that falls off the balance beam. And Ella was first up. And so when we talk about five up, five count, basically six athletes compete and five scores count. So when that very first athlete makes a mistake, it then puts a little more pressure back on the rest of the team. Our ladies knew at that point, oh boy, I better do my job because there's no doubt my score counts. And I think that is what we train for week after week. In the gym, we put the ladies in some real pressure set positions, but you can't really simulate that until you're in real competition. So for us, 
And looking back at that performance, there was a lot of growth in the balance beam performance. We even had a little bit of adversity over in bars where we had an athlete do almost a perfect routine and then make a mistake and everyone behind them had to hit. Yep. And that's, a, that's really, we say uh, privilege is, pressure is a privilege. Okay. And that's what we look at it is, is that when you're faced with the opportunity to grow and deal with adversity, that's truly where your character is built, that's where the team unity is built, and that's where you really find true champions. I love that. Pressure is a privilege. That's definitely a positive way of looking at pressure when you're in a pressured situation like that. But don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll be talking about Jordan Paradise and her amazing performance. The Dana Duckworth Show is brought to you by Alabama One. Come on, Joe. Yeah. So I started when I was very little. I think it was around six when I decided to get serious. My mom was a gymnast, so I like to say it was in my blood. You know, you always start out with the mommy and me classes, and I fell in love. I couldn't be more thankful for my family. I mean, this sport, it takes a lot out of everybody. It means a lot that even still to this day, they're always pushing me and always supporting me. Even on the hard days, I get up and still push myself because of what everyone sacrificed a little for me to keep doing what I love. Probably my sophomore year is when Bama happened. And that just really sparked that fire again because after watching them compete and talking to the coaches and hearing just like the whole family aspect of it all, it just really pushed me to keep going because I found that spark again and I knew that I couldn't stop. My family, the family business is a Renaissance festival. So my grandfather started the Renaissance business. They started in Colorado and he just bought a huge property and to be honest I don't know what drove him to think this is what he wanted to do. My dad got into it. Now there's us and one of us may take it over one day but it's just it's stuck with the family ever since my grandfather decided to buy that land and start it. Growing up there is it was fun. I mean you see a lot of different people, a lot of different things and we would always help work and you'd see there's jousting and elephants and all this different stuff you get to see and it was definitely a different experience but it's fun. After I committed to Alabama, we knew I had to take a picture on the elephants at the Renaissance Festival. I'll be honest, I was terrified. It was very fun and I would do it again but in the moment, I was terrified. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dana Duckworth Show, brought to you by Alabama One. I'm Kennedy Chase, here with head coach Dana Duckworth and coach Jordan's performance as a freshman. I mean, amazing. How are you feeling? All right, first of all, I want to ride an elephant. Yes. That is something that I want to do, and how fun. I have such an excitement to see and listen to Jordan talk about how much she loves her family and the gratitude she shows toward the fact that she knows she wouldn't be where she is without her family and that support. And that just speaks volumes to me. As far as Jordan goes as a freshman, we talked about adversity on the show. And this young woman came to Bama with a vision of what she thought her freshman year was going to look like. And she doesn't mind me sharing this. She got shut down for 12 weeks. She had a wrist situation that we had to let heal and take time. And so that was really hard for her to be able to come here with this vision of training all four events, being on all four events. So when she was able to compete vault for the very first time, you should have seen the passion behind her own teammates that wanted it for her so badly. Because there's a lot of pain and sweat equity and fear and doubt that goes in when you're shut down as a gymnast. Remember, they've done it since they were very, very young, like she shared. So I can speak to, to Jordan that she is a competitor and she wants to please the world. And I love that she just loves her family. And that all pays off because she's a part of this Alabama team. And she shares her gifts with them every day. And she's one to watch because she's super talented. Yes, she is. And that just speaks so highly on your gymnasts and how really resilient they are in situations when it comes to overcoming adversity. But let's talk about 
the Auburn meet coming up. Yes. How are you <laughs> How are you preparing your team for this next meet? We are staying the course. We're staying true to our system and our progress, and it doesn't change much. Our goal is to continue to get better. Of course, we want to stick more landings. We want to hit more handstands. And the consistency inside the gym that we are seeing needs to translate into competition. It's going to be a very tough environment. We know that going in. It's going to be wonderful for the state of Alabama to have two in-state rivals doing some of the best gymnastics in college, in the, really anywhere. You've got Shallon as an Olympian from Canada. You've got SUNY as an Olympian for the United States of America. And they're both in college competing at the highest level. So we are looking forward to the challenge. We are going in there to focus on one thing, the Bama bubble. Do what we do every day, stay focused on what we can control, and feed off the energy like it's our own. I love that, and it definitely will be a meet that you don't want to miss. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Roll tight, everyone. This has been a presentation from Learfield.